Rosveen Gold is the former Asia chairman of Republicans Abroad, and he joins me now from Taipei. Thank you so much for joining us on the program today. Now, uh, a lot of people are comparing the protests happening across America today to the Rodney King riots in Los Angeles that took place almost 30 years ago. Comparing the two, how would you evaluate today's America compared to uh, back in 1992 when it comes to police brutality and racism towards black people? Well, uh, unfortunately, these things still occur as far as uh, the disproportionate use of force against uh, black Americans or minority Americans. On the other hand, there's also been progress in the United States. Uh, police forces are certainly more diverse. Political leadership is certainly more diverse. And we, we see that in the last few hours where local elected leaders or state leaders who are calling on uh, protesters to be peaceful and not use violence are a very di diverse group. Some of the mayors, for example, of these large cities where protests and violence are occurring who are calling on people not to use violence are minorities. So, yeah, there, there's progress, but obviously there are, there are still these horrible incidents where police use a disproportionate amount of force, which is a combination of, yes, maybe the individual officers are racists, but it's also a question of, of a lack of good training as well. What do you make of uh, Trump's handling of these protests and the way that he's phrased things? Well, there's two separate issues here. One, one is the word choice that President Trump might use in, in tweets or, in, or when he faces the media at the White House, for example. And it doesn't matter what the issue is. We know about half of America will agree with what President Trump says or writes on Twitter, and half of America will, will always be upset with what he writes, and you know, his style just causes that. But, but on the other hand, we have to also look at what kind of federal resources he's making available. Does he speak with the local elected leaders, such as mayors and governors, and offer the National Guard, for example, or, or other types of federal resources? And the answer to that is yes. I mean, clearly, uh, he wants the violence to end, and he has a, a shared uh, uh, goal with local elected leaders, regardless of whether they're Democrats or Republicans. So we have to look at the two issues, which uh, are, do proceed simultaneously. And again, uh, some people will be happy and some people will be unhappy with what he says. But we should also keep in mind uh, that there is a genuine desire by President Trump for violence to end. Do you think that if these protests weren't as tense as they have been for the past uh, five days now, that um, Derek Chauvin would have been charged as quickly as he had been? Yeah, th this is a great question, and, and it's certainly a factor in, in why there was so much public anger that, that became uh, uh, riots within the last few days, is that people, and, and quite legitimately, questioned the pace of the investigation. Uh, he would have been charged at, at some point, whether with a state crime or a federal crime. I mean, clearly, the the, the way that um, he handled the situation would, would violate uh, all basic police training. Uh, so when it would have occurred, again, that, that's the question, uh, but it, he has now been charged, but it hasn't modified what, what was growing anger. And there are also the other officers uh, involved, and when are they going to be charged? Uh, so there, there are a number of moving parts here, and it's very hard to mollify an angry public, as we've seen in the past few days. All right, Ross Fiengold, the former Asia chairman of Republicans Abroad, thank you so much for that analysis.